Alright, welcome back to my Evil Within, Akumu Difficulty, Guided Walkthrough. And we're in Chapter 3, and this area can be pretty tough to get through, unless you understand how this area works, because it's not exactly that obvious. It turns out that there is no requirement to fight any of the enemies here, with the exception of the Sadist. But first, here in the building near the save point, we find one of the most cruel aspects of Akuma Mode. The explosives. The area where you need to land the arrow is ridiculously small. In fact, this is where Akumo differs from Nightmare, as it is a bit wider in Nightmare. But you can expect to die a lot of times to these bombs on Akuma mode. And there is no advice that I can give you, you simply need to get a feel for it. And what's worse, you can't look at the dial from a distance to see where the safe spot is, because as soon as you try to disarm it, the dial will change. In other words, it's randomized. It changes when you die and reload as well. Nevertheless, because trap parts are so valuable, you will at least want to try to disarm as many bombs as you can. Although you will definitely not see me disarming all of them. Especially when I'm far away from the last checkpoint. Anyway, this area normally requires a lot of sneaking around and can be quite unforgiving. Moreover, there's already a Ruvik clone in this area, which on survival mode doesn't appear until chapter 10, I believe. However, here's the trick to this area. As soon as you kill the sadist, all other enemies will die as well. So, what you will see most people do is to save the sadist for last. You know, kill everything in this area and then fight the sadist. But the irony is that doing the opposite will make this area a breeze. Now you are probably thinking, how can you fight the sadist while leaving the other enemies around? After all, as soon as you start the fight, you will get gangbanged by all other enemies drawn in by the sound. Well, there is a very effective way to do it. And I will show you in a minute. Running up ahead, but, but, come this way. Quietly, mind you. Have a look for yourself. Those things chased me all the way into the village. Me too. They're all over the place. Leslie went through that gate. Good lord. There are too many to shoot our way through. One of us could try to lure them away while the other gets the gate open. You're the one with the gun. If you say so. So what you need to do is to sneak to the barn and take the axe found in the wall in the building where you came from with you. There's a second axe found inside the barn. The sadist is a very tough enemy, so he can survive no less than two axes and eight shots from the revolver. However, as long as you don't hesitate for a single moment, you can slash him with both axes, fire 6 rounds, reload and then fire the final 2, before the sadist has a chance to attack you and before other enemies have the chance to intervene. And as I said, as soon as the sadist dies, all other enemies will despawn automatically. And that means that you can safely loot the entire area for resources. Alright, so now just take your time and get everything you need from this area. All ammunition, green gel, trap parts, shotgun, crossbow and the small keys. Speaking of the small keys, it's better to throw bottles at those statues to break them than to waste bullets. Wait! Over 
not here! Wait, uh, officer. You must take me with you. Detective. Castellanos. Leslie should be just ahead. It is imperative that we find him. Valerio, it's me. The good doctor is here. This is my brother, Valerio. Leslie's original doctor. Peel away. Yes, expose everything. Hey, what are you doing? All right, chapter four. It's not necessary to kill the doctor inside the house, but you can get an extra key and some resources from inside the house. After all, all it takes is a shotgun blast and a match. However, don't use the axe that you find outside, because we're going to need that one for the next enemy. And by the way, if you're holding an axe when going back to the hospital through the mirror, the axe will disappear. So always drop an axe before you go back when you need yeah, a break in the soothing presence of the nurse. So, as I said, take the axe with you inside the next house, because as soon as you find Leslie, you will have your first encounter with one of those invisible tentacle face monsters. So if you immediately run over to the door when he comes in, you can quickly kill it in one hit. Leslie! Oh, thank heavens. Dr. Hermenis is here. Settle down. Wait, Doc. I think something's coming. Okay then, this part can be rather tricky. As soon as you approach the door in the back, a whole horde of enemies will spawn and attack you all at once. And on Akuma mode, there is another Ruva clone on the other side of this area. And remember that as soon as a Ruva clone sees you, you are practically dead. So we're going to set a trap for him. And speaking of traps, there are several of those in this area, so be careful. But other than the trap that we're going to set for the Ruva clone, this will be the first instance that we're going to use a very powerful way to trap enemies and burn a bunch of them all at once, namely using the shock bolt. It's definitely advisable to upgrade the shock bolt, because the more enemies you can catch at once and the longer the effect remains active, the more likely you are to be able to get rid of a ton of enemies all at once. However, and as you will see, the amount of enemies you can burn with a single match is uh, not consistent. So as you saw, I placed two explosive bolts at the edge of that puddle of blood. That way the Ruva clone will die pretty much as soon as it spawns. And that means that we can safely focus on the other enemies. Oh. 
Well, I had some bad luck. The reach of the fire is completely inconsistent, as I said. So every time you try this, it will be different. So I almost get killed. Fortunately, you find grenades when you enter this area. So that's a useful way to finish the rest of them off. Every time the game forces you to slow walk, just aim your gun and you can move like twice as fast as the game would usually allow. This also works in water or something similar that slows you down. Alright, first encounter with the adorable Laura. Nothing different here from other difficulty settings, just flee from her and stop for nothing. Well, apart from the traps when you get down the stairs of course. However, you don't have time to disarm them, so just scroll under them. Shit, I'd better run! What is it with you? Well, we'll be seeing her again pretty soon. And that was practically already the end of this chapter. All that you need to do now is move down the stairs and then as soon as Rufik shows up, move all the way back up to the door. And when the cutscene starts, the chapter will be over. So thank you all for watching, make sure to leave a like, tell me your own experiences in the comment section, subscribe if you haven't already and stay tuned for the next episode.